Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Chew with Rue. Today we're going to dive into another recipe and we're going to cook up Chicago deep dish pizza, low carb style. For that particular item, I think there's one perfect choice of the bobbleheads behind me, and that is Mr. Larry Gura, Royals Hall of Famer, Chicago resident, Larry Gura. Let's get it going. It's the Chew. All right, so here are all the ingredients you're going to need for the very best low carb Chicago deep dish pizza you can ever imagine. The first ingredient is actually just this dish right here. I know it's not food, don't eat this part, but you need a nine inch Pyrex dish just like this. We'll talk more about it in just a second. You're going to need yourself some pizza sauce. I actually just use the Great Value brand. Find the lowest carb one you can. We've got about a quarter cup of that right here. Your favorite sausage that you've got the 16 ounces of sausage, just basically one of those tubes. I like the original Jimmy Dean. Good stuff right there. Um, you're gonna need some mozzarella cheese, a heavy two cups. I like to finish things off with a little freshly grated Parmesan as well. That's totally optional. And then whatever you wanna top it with. With Today, we are gonna be building a meat lover. So we had some meatballs the other day. That's another recipe coming up. Low carb meatballs cooked in the pressure cooker. I've got some bacon, some leftover from cooking up some bacon this morning, and some pepperoni. So whatever toppings you want, the world is your oyster, as they say. Although, I wouldn't put oyster on a pizza. That sounds gross. Okay, so let's get things started. The first ingredient to any pizza is the crust. And this crust was inspired when we were in Chicago. We went to Luminati's Pizza. Oh my goodness, that is some good pizza. And they had a low-carb crust. And I was like, how are they going to make this happen? They brought it out. And that's exactly what we're gonna build right now. We got this dish, they used sausage, just like we have right here. So that's what we're gonna do to make our pizza crust. So all you gotta do, I always take it and I just basically pretend like I'm gonna create sausage patties, okay? So you just kinda cut it into strips, just like you're, you know, I'm making these little, little discs that I would throw into the pan. And if I was making sausage patties, I'm just gonna cut those. You guys can cut them if you want while it's still in the packaging. I've never had good luck with that. You know, it has the little lines on the outside. Somehow that makes it harder for me. I would just rather cut it just like this. And then once you're done cutting it into strips, you're done with that knife, and you've got yourself like a whole bunch of little discs like this. Now, the next step is pretty simple as well. So with our disc now form, all we want to do is create our crust. And I feel like these discs just make everything so much easier. I normally start around the outside edge, and I just start to press this into a thin crust all the way around. I'm just going to take these discs and kind of move them like that. And then I'm going to press them together and create pretty even uniform crust all the way around. As much as you can, get that middle to set, connect it up so you've created yourself one pizza pie that goes all the way around just like this. Let's speed that up. All right, so our, our pie pan is now fully formed. Notice it's about the same translucent all the way through. Notice I've got no gaps. You can really take your time making this. This is the hardest part of the recipe right here, folks. You get that in there and you are all set. We're gonna take this and we are gonna put this into a preheated oven, 350 degrees for 10 minutes. We'll be back. Now you might be wondering why I chose Larry Gura as our bobblehead for today's deep dish pizza. And the reason is simple. He's one of few Royals bobbleheads where he was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Well, just outside in suburb called Joliet. He also grew up a Cubs fan and in fact started his pitching career with the Cubs before coming to the Royals. He's a two-time Royals Pitcher of the Year. He pitched two games in the World Series in 1980 and had himself one of the best careers in the history of the Kansas City Royals when he, became, he also became a member of the Royals Hall of Fame. Something you might be interested in to notice about his bobblehead is that little thing of honey down there. That honey pot, some people always wonder, in fact, 
You try to do a Google search, you will not find the answer to this question. Why does Larry Gura have a honey pot at the bottom of his bobblehead? But the story goes that he always had honey in his locker at Royal Stadium. Some people think it was because he loved to eat honey as a snack, but I believe it was because he liked to use it to doctor the baseball. You see, Larry Gura was well known as what he even self-opposed as a junk baller. He didn't have a great fastball. He really just kept batters off stride by throwing slow, fast, and curving that ball. And he called himself a junk baller. In fact, he was the one that said his fastball was junk. He finished his career actually in 1985. Uh, he tried to salvage it in 85. He didn't have much juice left in the tank. He tried to, try to screw ball. He made a few relief appearances in 1985, and the Royals ended up putting him on waivers, even though they owed him a little over a million dollars for 1985 and 1986. And his release or placement on waivers led to some young pitchers coming up that actually propelled the Royals to the 1985 World Series, those including Brett Saberhagen and Mark Gubaza. Okay, our 10 minutes is up. We're going to hop into the oven, see what she looks like. We're looking for that to not be 100% fully cooked. Okay, it doesn't have to be 100% done, but you want most of the pink out of that sausage. We are going to put it back in the oven here in just a bit. So it doesn't have to be 100% done. Here's what we're looking for. Oh man, she's ready. We're going to have a pile of grease right there. You're going to notice uh, there's a few spots that were a little bit thicker. We're going to have a little bit of pink right there. But we are ready to take this and we're going to dump out the grease into a reserve dish because we don't want all that grease in our pizza. So next up, you want to leave your hot pads on, grab your pizza pie, and dump out as much grease as you can in that reserve. Make sure not to mess too much with that outer edge of that pizza. You don't want to mess up the pizza pie that you've just started to build. This thing is going to be delicious. Once you've taken off most of that grease, you're going to want to grab some paper towels just like this. And all you want to do is just pull off a few and then blot a lot of that grease away from the bottom. Just like this, it'll pull right away. This is firmed up pretty well, so you'll be able to easily take that grease right off the pizza, and then we're ready to start assembling our pizza pie. All right, so normally I let this sit up just a little bit more and get a little bit cooler, but it's still a little warm, so I'm gonna put it on top of this hot pad right here as I assemble the rest of the pizza. First step you're gonna do, remember we have just a little bit more than two cups. The reason you got more than two cups is because I always start with cheese on that bottom layer. That way if your sausage, if you're, if you're new to this, you're gonna find that you have little holes in your sausage. And if you put a little bit of cheese down there, it's gonna cover up a multitude of sins because that'll melt down first and you'll be ready to go. Using a spoon, if you want to or not, I'm getting pretty good about just laying this out. You could also use one of those squeeze bottles of sauce. You're gonna to wanna to lay that sauce down next into the pizza pie. And then it's however you want to build it. You can put pepperoni down next. You can put the cheese down next. You get to layer the pizza the way you see fit. From here on out, it's up to you. More sauce, less sauce, that's all up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and get mine going. Let's speed it up just a little bit. Again, this next part, this freshly grated Parmesan is all optional, it's whether you want it or not. And then of course, we're gonna finish things off with just a little bit of that Italian seasoning. You know, my favorite ingredient in Italian seasoning has to be the dill. I just love dill and Italian seasoning. Um, dill is one of my favorite ingredients. I figure I should say that uh, 40 times in this episode since I said basil like 600 times in the last one. But yes, that Italian seasoning is really good with all that basil. All right, so that's it. I've assembled my pizza pie. I put my bacon down in there underneath the cheese. I put pepperoni on that. I put some meatballs left over, got all my sauce, and I finished it off with a little freshly grated Parmesan and some Italian seasoning. Put as much or as little as you want. This thing feels pretty heavy, which tells me I've made myself a pretty darn good Chicago deep dish pizza. We're gonna throw that in the oven until everything on top is golden brown. Somewhere between 12 to 17 minutes, somewhere in that little window, everything will firm up and we'll be back in just a second to try this amazing pizza pie. All right, the time is nigh. Let's see how we did. You can actually cook this way longer than if you want to guys, as crispy as you wanna make it. Look at that, golden brown and delicious on top. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be good. Here's the hardest part. You've gotta let it sit out for about five minutes to set up. You have to let it sit on the top, even though it smells so delicious, don't touch it. Just set it out on the stove top and wait five minutes. Okay, 
Mason's ready to eat. He is hungry. It takes dad too long when he makes these videos. All right, here it is. Nice outside crust. You notice we didn't have to spray that at all because of all the, I guess, oil and grease. <laughs> we cut right into this bad boy. All right, Mace, I know you're hungry. Why don't you hand me a plate? Let's see how this looks. You want a big piece? Yeah. You're gonna need a fork for this, my friend. I didn't let it quite sit out for those five minutes that I even told you guys, because he's so hungry. He couldn't wait. Cheese is running off. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be good. I'll get you a piece. Let's see if I can give him a good shot of what it looks like coming out of there. You know what this reminds me of that I haven't made in a long time? Is that low carb lasagna. Also has a sausage crust. That features a lot of ricotta cheese. Oh my. Oh, look at the cheese pull. Oh my. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You're welcome, world. Enjoy. <laughs> look at all that cheese. There you go, buddy. All right, so that's it. Low carb Chicago deep dish pizza. Time for the big taste test. Larry, thanks for being our guest today. Does it look good? Oh, yes, it does. He says yes. I don't, didn't put any honey on it for you, man. I did doctor it up a different way though. Let's see how it tastes. You gotta get some of that crust in there. Oh, it's hot. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a smaller bite next time. Um, that was absolutely fantastic. It's been a while since I made this one. This is a treat. You guys are really gonna like this. What do you think, Mace? It's good. Yeah? Just good. Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. It's a Chicago Deep Dish is known for being super deep, and they made their crust with sausage. Hi, Cindy. It's a Do it, 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 do it,